Hey Land Party Gamers, we're here with Robert Dunlap and we're taking a look at the game that he's the lead designer of, Unearned Bounty. Welcome to uh, Make Your Maker, our second episode. It's been a while, so... Uh, Thanks for having me. Yeah, of course. Um, so this is a really cool game. We got to see it first at uh, UCSD at the Winter Game Fest and it's sort of a mix between, uh, I was telling somebody, World of Warships and the, Z the Zelda uh, Wind, Wind Waker, Waker games, yeah, just for the visuals mostly. And then you were telling me it's got a lot of MOBA aspects because of the upgrades mid-game, the gold, and you're able to uh, to change how your ship mechanics work and for the better, upgrades-wise, mm -hmm. uh, mid-game. The ability system mm -hmm. as well as uh, uh, the BBE aspects for having to jump. Oh, okay. And then, so when you, let's take a quick look-see at some of the gameplay and then we'll, we'll go into... Uh, We'll go into that. So what we're looking at here is about an hour of gameplay that we did here at the LAN party uh, earlier today, and it gives you a good, quick idea of, of what the game is going to be and and how far along um, is this so far that we're playing. We've been playing. So we've been um, working on this project since the beginning of 2016. So we've been working on it for about a year and nine months. Mm -hmm. um, we're probably we have a lot of the core functionality done. We have the first map as well as uh, the first four boats that we've been uh, sort of like polishing and getting all the balance mm -hmm. together. A lot of the core, like, hey, here's how the systems work. From there, we want to add a lot more uh, maps and ships and things. So we're probably about halfway through. That makes sense. And then each each ship has its own abilities and things like that. So um, we, have, we have some footage here of going through the, the, the different ships that are available. Um, let me take a look at that real quick. It's probably not during a game. <laughs> uh, let me find that real quick. Now the primary fire of the game is obviously this blue arc where you have the, the cannons, and that's, you know, everybody thinks of... of the broadside content. Yeah, exactly. And so you've got, you've got to make sure that you're able to aim at them and not the other way around. And, and it's 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 neat to to see. Um, you don't get you don't get a lot of this kind of seaward battle the way that you play it here this in this day, and I think it's a cool little niche you guys found. Mm -hmm. That uh, I, I liked. Um, some I was trying to tell tell somebody about it earlier without using the exact same thing that we talked about, and I asked, "Have you ever played Black Flag?" And I really liked that combat style of being able to like get inside, make that turn, um, make that shot, and then. Turn about while those cannons reload, and use all of your firing arcs. I actually used to play a game called um, Star Trek Bridge Commander. Oh, okay. And you had the same idea. You had different firing arcs on the ship, and when one of them was recharging, um, the other ones were ready to go. Mm -hmm. And so that's what this reminded me of. I was. Uh, um. So we this... have four boats. Mm -hmm. Um. We have the Brigand, the Ghastly Crow, um, the Spitting Dragon, and Iron Horns. Okay. So each of the boats have a unique active ability, um, whether it's equivalent to a grenade, the poison gas cloud on Singed, <laughs> a, a dash ability that rams other players, or having a flamethrower. Yeah. Um, we're, we have a lot of really cool abilities that we're going to be adding in for the next set of boats that we're working on, um, but each of them have their unique personality and gameplay yeah. uh, preferences of like, hey, this is how um, like, I want to play this type of boat. Absolutely. And as we saw the match, like, as we were playing through the matches, like, people learned to, like, oh, that's really cool, yeah. you know, using the flamethrower, using the dash, like, I can wreck these other players. That makes sense. And, and you get the different boats depending on the play style that you're used to from the other games or the way that you like to play yourself. Mm -hmm. um, and I know, I, I know that there are different game types and game modes. Even on this one map, we get to see a, a little bit of each. Mm -hmm. um, what are the, the game modes that are going to be, hopefully, in the final release when it comes out? Yeah, so right now we have um, an eight-player free-for-all match mm -hmm. uh, where the goal of the game, the goal of this mode is to be the most infamous pirate on the high seas. Yep. And you earn uh, infamy by killing other players, and you'll steal their infamy uh, based on how much they had when you mm -hmm. defeat them. The first-place player has a gold skull above their head, Yep. Um, so you can sort sort of always know where they're at, as well as um, potentially work together with other players to, uh, to you know, take them down a peg or two. That makes sense. So when you're stealing infamy um, from them, 
is it is it a one to one basis or is it if you have a little infamy and you manage to kill the guy with the most does that decrease them by a lot more than if it was the second player yes to do you, it okay as I said, yeah it's the um it's based on the, the difference between the players. Ah, okay. That's pretty so, cool. Uh, yeah, eighth place killing uh, first place. Uh, big swing. Big swing. Big swing, yeah. Because what was our, our last game, uh, Magic went from fourth place in the last three seconds to getting a triple kill and get right to first. Yep. And he won the, the game. There, and yeah, there, by taking out there. first place and second place. That's right. Uh, so, yeah, no. Um, it, it's to have those swings, have those uh, pieces in it where it's mm -hmm. like, hey, yeah, um, it's not just a straight up like kill death. Like how many kills yeah. can you get? You really need to know who you're fighting against, and it's it it is kind of reminiscent of you see that's somebody's specific boat, and you're like, oh, they're in the lead. It it, it is kind of like the high the high seas back in the day. You used to be like, oh, that that's that flag specifically. I'm gonna stay away from that guy. He's got he's got a good ship. Or you know that hey, if I kill that player, mm -hmm. then I'm gonna get. You're gonna twice, get the bounty twice or three times as many points. Yeah, uh, for killing them. So the name of the of the game, Unearned Bounty. Where where did that come from? Um. So uh, we we do have a system in the game where, uh, based on how infamous the other player is, mm -hmm. um, that's how much gold you'll you can get from killing them. Oh, okay. So yeah, everyone has sort of sort of that bounty on their head. Ah. Um, and it's kind of like even though you can fight other pirates. Equivalent to like being a privateer, yeah. Um, you know, you can raid the trade ships if you want to for gold, yeah. um, or you can tackle the other pirates. Now, as far as uh, infamy goes, how uh, are those points given other than killing other players? Um, so primarily, it's from other players, but mm -hmm. um, sort of what we're seeing on screen right now, we have a uh, a capture the kill zone mm -hmm. um, that gives you a bunch of extra infamy as well as. Uh, Gold. Um, yeah. We have at the beginning of the match, uh, like sinking trade ships, as well as uh, another map, another uh, sort of mini mode that it's collecting trade goods that are sort of lost at sea. Lost at sea. Yeah. Um, and so it's all these like. Uh, like mini games. Mini almost. games. It's, we want to have that very arcade kind of feel to it. Sure. Absolutely. Um, and uh, it's, it's hectic that regardless of what direction you look, um, or want to go like sail towards. Yeah. There's always something going on. There's something like, hey, I can attack these trade ships. I can attack this player. I can attack, um, you know, this objective. Yeah. Um, and to us, like being a pirate is about freedom. Yeah, that makes um, sense. And so, um, one of the key features that we have in our game is that the world is round. Uh -huh. um, so, uh, like Pac-Man style, yeah. where if you keep sailing to the right, you'll end up in the left. That's right. Um, or and, hit a rock. Or <laughs> whatever you choose to do, um, it's your choice. And uh, we, we use the similar, like, the Capture the Hill Zone yeah. to sort of bring to get together players in the last couple minutes. And sort of force engagement yeah. in that. I like that. Um, so when you... Um, I know that we had some questions when we were playing that might be good to bring up is uh, your health meter at the bottom right here. I've got 337. For someone to um, get more health, I know that I, I found the two ways. You you get the uh, the loot from a sunken ship, or you upgrade your hull. Mm -hmm. So that's that's pretty much it. So you, you should be able to out-sustain people if you continue to get more loot from ships. As long as you keep in, engaging mm. um, in, in the game. Gotcha. That was one of the big like sort of design decisions we wanted to have was, yeah. um, even if someone's in first place, we want them to die eventually. Okay. Um, and that they can't just hide. Yeah. Um, and then just find, like, oh, here's the um, healing spot. Let me just ca either camp the area oh, and, okay. or just stick around that spot. So an area in which you could, like, dock, like, dry dock and dry heal dock. was an, an idea that was thrown about? Well, it was it was one that people bring up a lot, mm. but um, when we play tested it, it, yeah. just, it didn't feel right. I, I do. I really like the idea of you have to work to get that heal or you have to work to get that that loot. Mm -hmm. So it seems to work very well. And the people, I remember, we played this for a solid hour, so that was good. It's hard to get uh, a whole room full of nerds to play one game, <laughs> so I'm happy with that. Yeah, and, and uh, I mean, there there was a little bit of difference between experience of players playing. Absolutely. Um, like, it took a while for everyone to kill me a couple times mm -hmm. in the first 
Match. I, I kept on trying. That's probably why you had high infamy, because um, I kept on giving it up to you. <laughs> so while we'll have custom games where you can create a lobby and you can mm -hmm. play with your friends, you can invite them or that makes choose sense. to have bots, um, we'll also have like a traditional like ranked mode where uh, ah. you can be matched up against other uh, players with similar skills. So you'll have like an MMR or you yeah. know you have your hidden rank or yeah, whatever. Uh, and there you go. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, the, as far as as game modes go, is it going to be? Uh, you pick a map and then you can pick a game type for yes. that map. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So it won't be specific to one map is only going to be played this way. You right. you should be able to. That's really cool. Mix and match. How many um, how many different game types do you think they're going to be seeing? Like teams and yeah. So the the core two modes that we that we're building is uh, the, we have the free for all and then a team mode. So okay. the team mode um, will have uh, or for team modes. Um, so the primary one that we want to that we're been working on mm -hmm. is four teams of three. Oh, neat. Um, and it kind of keeps that hectic fe yeah. kind of feeling. You get attacked from anywhere, almost. Yep. Um, that there's three teams that are fighting you, mm -hmm. while you still have your friends that you're sort of working together with. Yeah. Um, they're going to be team damage as well, so you, if they're yep. in engagement, you got to be careful where you land your shots. Mm -hmm. Friendly cool. fire. That's right. Um, and so we have, um, in that mode, there's three permanent King of the Hill spots. Okay. Um, and so at any given time, one team always doesn't have a hill. Makes sense. Um, and so you're fighting over either you have a hill and defend it, or trying to capture yeah. um, one of the opponent's hills. Yeah, and, um, and, I, and I guess if you keep destroying the other teams, your boats are going to be drastically more powerful than theirs. Right. So you could theoretically have more than one. Yeah, you could potentially hold Yeah. Um, it's just a, a, do you split your team or do you uh, stay, stick together? Gotcha. Um, and so that that's kind of like the dynamic that we want to uh, keep in that mode. Mm -hmm. And then um, from requests, we'll have a uh, two teams of six, okay. um, sort of like team death mode. Yeah, gotcha. That makes sense. Have you thought about um, uh, like a, a capture the flag or anything like that? Kind of classic. <laughs> It'd be a little rough with this, but it could be something where you you're like raiding a port, and that's you know when they kill you, they pick up the flag or what have you. Yeah, um, one of the um, one of the game modes that we I wanted to do was uh, was would be equivalent to assault. Okay. Uh, where it's taking um, an objective to the opponent's base. Ah. Uh, because with a capture the flag mode, yeah, um, it gets easier the closer it, you get to your base with the yeah, flag. Of um, course. So with an assault, it sort of like uh, raises the bar as you push it towards uh, the opponent's base. So let's talk a little bit about uh, the ships um, and their upgrades. So right here we're watching, what's the name of this? Uh, spinning Dragon. This is Spinning Dragon. So he's got the fire abilities, and I know that they have a special as well as a passive mm -hmm. per ship. And, uh, and so this guy, he's got the flame shot going out the side and the front, which uh, takes gold over time to use, but it has a very low or nil cooldown, which is really cool. Mm -hmm. um, and then he also does uh, damage over time, regardless of how he attacks, which is which is very special. Um, what are some of the other ships and their abilities and passives? So the um, the brigand has a, a similar like a, a ability a passive action on the cannibal. Yep. Which it earns a little bit of gold for landing cannibal shots. Really cool. Um, it has an active ability that uh, throws a uh, a barrel bomb. It, it works similar to a grenade. Where it's uh, you can throw it 360 degrees, mm -hmm. um, so wherever you're aiming at, you can throw it, and it does has some AOE damage uh, radius as well. Gotcha. Um, and it deals a percent of the opponent's max health. So oh, we, okay. we did a percent health so yeah. that it's not as effective versus trade ships ah. as uh, normal players. So you're you want to use it against players to save it to save it. Interesting. For not, okay. Not for farming on the trade boats. That makes sense. Um, and uh, also, if someone upgrades their health, mm -hmm. it can help counter um, that by a little bit, as it deals an extra oh. twenty-five or fifty percent damage. Gotcha. Um, based on wh whatever the opponent, their hull upgrade is at. That makes sense. So um, that's pretty cool that it scales with that because of, of how it works with the percent damage. That's neat. That it 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 it, it becomes more effective the later the match progresses. Gotcha. As people just, have those hull upgrades. That makes sense. All right. Um, Who else do we got? So we have the Ghastly Crow, which we just saw. Mm -hmm. um, 
<laughs> sink there. You drove right and through drove it. Drove right through. That's so right. the the ghastly crow is very close to singed mm -hmm. um, from League of Legends. League of Legends. Yep. Um, so it has like a poison gas cloud that you can activate to trail behind the boat, mm -hmm. and it deal if someone's caught inside of it, it'll deal damage to them. Gotcha. Um, and then the passive is that when it dies, like we just saw right here, is it'll explode into a giant um, puff of poison gas. Gotcha. And is it, um, I know that you can upgrade all of these abilities, which we'll get into some of the upgrades in a minute, um, with the, with, what, how does his upgrade affect how that works? It's the duration as well as the damage. Okay. Uh, as and, the... And so duration as far as how long it lasts on the map? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So, like, how long the trail of Poison Gas That makes have. sense. Before um, it dissipates. Yeah. And all the damage on all the abilities, uh, increase quite significantly, um, if you upgrade the oh, ability. Oh, okay. Um, so it's definitely worth doing. Yeah. So, sometimes it's by um, almost double or triple the damage. Wow. Uh, but it's you. It's you're choosing the the using the ability versus increasing your hull by twenty five percent, increasing your cannons by you know adding an extra cannon, uh, like okay. a third of the number of cannons you have. Absolutely. Ability. And so trade offs. We have a very like limited pool of upgrades, and you can only upgrade each thing twice. Yeah, um, is that each upgrade is meaningful? Absolutely. Rather than having like ninety up levels and <laughs> here's yeah, all like a, <laughs> the tree of things you can do. The tree of things, and or oh, I upgrade my health by one percent. Oh each gosh, <laughs> no. So we've got one more ship, and then we'll go into what the upgrades do. Yep. Uh, the generic ones. So Iron Horns has a dash. Um, if you catch someone while you're uh, dashing with the, the, the ram, mm -hmm. um, it deals a significant amount of damage to yeah. that other player. That's yeah, a lot. <laughs> um, it's it's enough to um, almost one uh, it almost insta kill every every player. Yeah. If there's very few instances where um, if you're dashing with iron horns that you die in the process. If if not, then yeah. the other player is basically dead. Which is you were at low health, and then they had you know upgraded their holes. They upgraded. They're almost per perfect health, yeah. and it just wasn't enough to kill them. Gotcha. Um, but uh, and then the passive is regardless if you're using the dash or not, you uh, you take reduced damage from ramming. Ah, okay, that makes sense. That's um, that's what I was going to ask if they do. So that mm -hmm. answers that off the bat. Yeah, you can go in a, like a trail of uh, trade ships and just run through them. Um, <laughs> oh, that's a perfect then, example of the of his special there. Yeah, <laughs> got caught. You got caught right there. That's right. Um, he was doing a lot of work with that ship this round specifically. Yep. He got a, a significant lead on us early on because that he yeah. said he upgraded that special more than anything else, and it shows there he has almost double some of our our infamy. Yeah, it has the um, one of the downsides of Iron Horns is that it has a very uh, long cooldown, mm. um, and then um, if you you can't stop it. So, oh yeah. So as defensively as a player, if you have an island on the other side oh. <laughs> of uh, you and the dash, then um, you can sort of, uh, some Ironhorn players will take the dash to ram you, yeah. and then they'll run ashore and uh, suicide themselves, yeah. um, which is quite devastating, um, that we have quite a, quite a bit of uh, suicide penalty oh, okay. uh, to the game. Like, you know, infamous pirates don't run their ship and ram. No, <laughs> no, that's right. And that makes sense. You lose infamy because, oh, that pirate was stupid. He's not all that infamous anymore. <laughs> so as we've got these, and then, there we go. I, I lost that uh, head-on battle. We both collided at the same time, but he must have had a little bit more health than I did. Uh, your uh, ability didn't look like it was active at the Oh, time. gotcha. So when, you, when your abilities are active, and I know this is an... Uh, you guys are probably, probably going to make this a little more yeah. obvious, um, but so that we used it there... If you know your ability is active, I think there's a shimmer or something that appears. Or um, so we have a um, a sound effect, um, but on the bottom left um, yeah. where the ability icon is, yeah. um, right now it's uh, purpled out, um, and normally it would be red. If it was uh, available. Uh, okay. And what's um, what's the shimmer that's on here? Uh, so this is you have enough gold to upgrade. The ah, good to know. Um, uh, and so uh, it's, it's sort of a. Reminder. Yeah. Hey, buddy. <laughs> you can upgrade. Yeah, press that button. <laughs> You're going to get owned. You can do it. <laughs> <laughs> and every time you die, you lose the last upgrade that you did. So we'll see probably this here as Super Sean <laughs> and I deal off, duel off on this. 
But um, and so, then if it was a suicide, then you lose the most recent two. Okay, that makes sense. Anytime you die, you lose the last one that you had upgraded. Yep. And then um, the suicide is the, the double. Oh, gotcha. So it's even that's it's, it's even worse. Penalty. Okay. So let's talk about the upgrades here, Z through V, mm -hmm. um, starting with the hull. So the hull um, is extra health, mm -hmm. um, as well as when you're not in combat, it gives you a little bit extra regeneration. Oh, okay. Um, but it, it gives you, when, it upgrade, when you upgrade the hull, you get the health bonus immediately. So even if you're at, like, an, uh, your last 100 health, you can upgrade the hull, and then you're at 225. I gotcha. So it's, it gives you the amount that it would have Increased. maxed, gotcha, and so you get that as new health. Mm -hmm. But you're still going to be missing the amount you were missing before. That you are missing okay. before. Gotcha. Um, so it's really good to, like, potentially in a clutch situation. Absolutely. Where it's like, hey, I need that to survive yeah. an extra cannonball or two. Absolutely. Um, then the next upgrade, uh, X, uh, for the cannons, mm -hmm. um, increases the number of cannons that you have per broadside of the boat. I gotcha. So it goes from three to four to five. Um, okay. It's similar with the health, you go from 500 to 625 to 750. Um, so the increments are quite significant. Yeah, it's definitely worth remembering to do, <laughs> and I'm sure that won't... First time you forget will probably be last in this game. Yep. The uh, C for sales um, increases the um, the max speed of the boat as acceleration, deceleration, and um, rotation, so just the handling of the boat mm -hmm. um, improves uh, by quite a bit. Yep. Um, even though in and of itself, like, hey, mobility doesn't like at first glance, it shouldn't matter as much as like having more health or yeah. having more damage. Yeah. Um, because of the way that you have two ca two sets of cannons, being able yeah. to fire your shot, change sides, and fire again. Yeah. Um, sales can actually increase your DPS by quite a bit. That makes sense. Against a single target. Yeah. Like even though the like total DPS that you're outputting doesn't increase, um, you're able to. Um, you can utilize it quicker. You can utilize it yeah. against the target that you're fighting. Yeah, exactly. Um, and we we decided to have the the reload times on the on the uh, the cannons. They're independent. They're relatively high. Yeah. Actually, to yeah, allow sure. players to have time to change sides. Ah, okay. Um, otherwise, it's an encouraging factor. Encouraging. Factor. Yeah, that makes sense. Because that's then that we were talking about that earlier with other games. You want to be able to to utilize every part of your boat as best you can and having the knowledge that your right side is loading independently from your left and if you can get around and get that other shot off before they can get you you might just win that engagement mm -hmm. so that's really nice um, and then the last one is is the, uh, ability. the special ability and depending on then that always depends on which boat you pick yes are there any um, like other special uh, boats that are going to be coming out soon that we can talk about or um, so the okay. Um, as we do the Kickstarter, we, we have, we've been putting together plans for mm. the next six boats that we want Ooh, to do. Nice. Um, and so a lot of that's to help get the art out for them. Ah. Um, so the turtle ship um, has been one of them that we've been prototyping and, and playing with for some time. And so it's a, uh, a Korean style boat. Okay. Um, I, like almost like an ironclad. Oh. Um, instead of like sails, it has like smokestacks on the back oh, of neat. the boat. Yeah. Um, and it has a uh, while your ab active abilities on um, like ready, mm -hmm. um, you take reduced projectile damage. Oh. So you'll actually take a little bit less damage from people firing cannons at you. That makes sense. Um, sort of like a tank, a little bit of a t more tankier. There you go. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, but when you use the active ability. Which sort of the shell of the turtle unravels, oh. um, and then you have these uh, Korean rocket launchers, like fireworks fire. Oh that you can fire. wow! And it's just like a rapid fire burst, for sure. Um, and it's very inaccurate, but it's, it's a lot of fun to <laughs> yeah <laughs> to so, just you know fire barrage. Absolutely. And then the shells down, and you actually take more damage. Oh um, yeah, it makes sense. So it's a good like finishing move. Yeah. Um, and then you want to just sort of stay away. away. Stay away. Yeah, that makes sense. That um, sounds really cool. You guys are pretty, definitely putting a lot of thought into the different types of, of, of ships. And it sounds like you're pulling a lot from historical ships or different nations and different cultures as well. As well as fantasy. That makes um, sense. You got to. So um, yeah, the, the, we've 
been pulling uh, like a stylized, uh, you know, fantasy and inspiration here. Mm-hmm. So it's a mix between magic or science and technology. Gotcha. Um, one of the boats that we're working on, uh, it it's like a Tesla ship that oh. has, uh, you know, like, uh, like electric, el- electric, like uh, like turbines running on. Wow. It and, um, and then um, we're we're working on like it has like a, a big cannon in the front of the boat that you can sort of charge to uh, fire at other players. That's that's that sounds like a <laughs> lot of fun. I can't wait to see when that comes out. Um, and and we're looking. We're obviously we're playing the same map here. This is the one that's available. Um, what different type of maps are we going to see in, in the game, and how is that going to affect the game modes that we're going to be playing? So um, with the um, we're doing different. Envi- we're working on um, environments and the map layouts, mm-hmm. sort of independent of each other. Okay. Um, so on the different modes, we'll have you know different or gameplay modes. We can reuse the environment to an extent. Yeah. Um, so we're working on a pirate graveyard yeah. for our second uh, map environment. Um, we have some music that uh, um, Bobby Rose, our composer, has been working on, as well as some concept art and putting together a couple of first islands. And we'll be sharing that uh, during our Kickstarter, some of the early work we've been doing for that. Neat. And you were saying a lot of that music's going to be on SoundCloud available for people yeah, to get. To listen to. That's pretty cool. Um, and so that'll have a more like nighttime um, ah, gotcha. To it. Will will the day and night be map specific, or do it you... will be map specific? Um, so the uh, each of the maps uh, will have their own sort of lighting settings. On them. So uh, um, some of them will have like the graveyard map will have it'll be at night, relative night. Gotcha. Um, where other ones will be dawn or a transition from uh, dusk to night or transition from. Um, night to, or to dawn. Okay, uh, that's so cool. we can even do a, 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 a lighting transition yeah. within the match itself. So it's going you're you're going to see that time change at during the battle, mm-hmm. and that might do you think that's going to um, to to give anybody an advantage, or is it just going to be purely aesthetic? Mostly aesthetic. Okay. Um, it's mostly just to have that cool effect of like. Um, each of the boats we've been putting like lanterns and stuff. Yeah, like you want to um, see that in the dark. You see it coming up on you, and like, oh, there's another guy. Fire! So this is one thing I wanted to make sure and find the a clip of. These is this is some of the in-game. Obviously, we've got currency on the top right underneath my name, and then we've got different chests that we can buy. Yeah. So this is still very work in progress. Yeah. Um. So what we wanted to do uh, on the monetization side is the game is free to play. Yep. Um. And we wanted to be very fair with. Um, like when we mean free, like um, similar to League of Legends, yeah, it's been one of the big ones that we've drawn inspiration from. Sure. So the different boats will be on rotation, mm-hmm. um, and if you want to unlock those boats, you can with the free currency, like mm-hmm. the sweat, like playing the game. You can yep. Earn them. You grind through it. You grind through it. That's right. Um, and then we'll have these chests um, that you're opening up, which will have different cosmetics. As well as the chance to unlock uh, the different boats. Oh, okay. Um, and so we sort of want that to be the main like flow through the game is playing these matches and opening you know the loot crates that are sure. in every game. And they're getting yeah, it's <laughs> they're, that they're, way. They're there, you know, whether it's um, players unknown battle royale yeah. or Overwatch, big one there. Overwatch. Every all the every, the way that it pops out of the chest. That's what it reminded me of first. Mm-hmm. And you get to kind of see what all the things that you got. So for now. Uh, I know that when you pick a specific flag, like I'm unlocking different flags in this, they also is a color scheme. But are you going to be able to have a flag of your choice with a color scheme of your choice? Um, we eventually we hope to have um, a skin system. Okay. Um, later on, which allow you to um, customize the colors while still keeping the nice the flag. And stuff. Okay. So we'll those are potentially some future plans. Right now, it's just a we pick the colors based on the uh, the flag. I gotcha. That makes sense. Um, and then, based on the rarity of the flag, um, or how like how much you've upgraded it, mm-hmm. unlocking duplicates is uh, oh. you can put on the uh, the sales. I gotcha. So that's why some of mine, like the mushroom, yep. later on in the game, I actually see the mushroom. Mm-hmm. But for now, it's just like a base version of that. Yeah. So that's what you get. Now I know in in some games um, you have. Outside modifiers, so things like uh, battle flags will give you 
um, like a 10% movement speed buff or, or higher damage. You're going to do any, of the, I guess, runes and masteries if going by League of Legends standards? Uh, we're trying to keep away from that. Mm -hmm. um, we, we want it to... Um, I mean, League of Legends is moving away from runes and masteries I heard about well. that, too. Um, More like World of Warships, I suppose. Yeah, so... For me, World of Tanks and World of Warships, mm -hmm. um, having, like, while intrinsically as players, like, we want to have a power progression yeah. of, like, oh, yeah, you know, now my ship's better. Yeah. Um, it, it works against new players. Absolutely. Um, and it works against the uh, the option of changing and trying out different play styles. Gotcha. Yeah. And so we wanted to keep it very... Um, unlocking the different votes is about having different play styles, mm -hmm. rather than having it being, um, this boat is better yeah. than this other. Or like, pay to win style, yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, and so we'll be monitoring, like, the, you know, player preferences, and mm -hmm. whether people feel that one boat is more yeah. overpowered than another. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll do, um, some of the League of Legends that when, when we release a new boat, yeah. um, after a week or two, we'll be... Um, putting it on the free rotation so we can see what everyone in the community that makes sense. How they uh, tried out the boat. So everyone will have a set free. Is it going to be a singular boat? Is it going to be a set of three? A, a set of couple boats. Okay, and cool. that'll depend on how many boats we can sort of get it within the yeah um, the set. So for um, I, I'm hoping to get probably about four to five free boats yeah. um, per week, and just every every other week or so. Um, switch them out. Gotcha. And boats will continue to find their way into the game, hopefully, yeah. as, as as the we game gets older and As we matures. launch, we'll be unlocking, or uh, putting out new boats about once every three to four months. Okay. Um, is our current plan. Sure, sure. And, and as the game grows, that may change. Yeah. That's really neat. And we have um, ideas for many, many, many different boats. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, we can always, uh, as we go through them, like, you know, League of Legends is at 160 something champions. Yeah, a little ridiculous, right. but I feel like Overwatch <laughs> so we'll, will get there one day too. One day too. Gee, <laughs> it's a lot of work goes into making each one, and then like we were talking the about earlier, between all the different yes, because you have to play each boat against each other boat to make sure that it isn't overpowered in too many ways. Mm -hmm. So that's interesting. I never noticed. Is there neon on the side of one of the ships? Um, um, like on the like that one. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> uh, in similar to I, I yeah, guess, yep, it's just blooming. Oh, okay. Um, it's yeah. like the lanterns on that guy. Mm -hmm. That's funny. So um, we'll be where those are sort of glowing. Yeah. In the nighttime maps, uh, those will be easier to see. Absolutely, that's really cool. So how can somebody get um, get aboard as we yeah, <laughs> use the fun? <laughs> yeah. Because um, uh, I know you said there's a Kickstarter coming uh, for some crowdfunding for the next leg of the of the game. So we'll have a, a demo mode um, that doesn't have the multiplayer okay. available on Game Jolt as well as IndieDB. Um, and those people can, it's DRM free, you can play it out, you can try it. Um, that has the tutorial as well as some of the custom, like, custom mode versus the bots. Okay. And we have a Discord set up um, that you can actually get a, uh, a Steam key mm. to try out the alpha um, today. It's, okay. it's available. Um, just know, by being part of that community. Just by being part of the community. Um, you know, it's just sort of um, participating. That's that's how we that you know we don't have a lot of players online. The game isn't launched, and you sort of have to be in that community to find other players to play with. Yeah. Um, and so we're hoping that players become proactive with organizing matches. Yeah, for sure. Um, but uh, you know, it's been a work in progress, mm -hmm. um, and you know, it's a, it's a way for people to ask, like, hey, you know, I found this bug how to uh, record it, and, you know, we can talk with people about it. And they can just put that right into the Discord it's chat, right and the you'll Discord. see it. Somebody's monitoring that. Yep. That's really cool. That's... And so that's why we've chose, we've been working with Discord. Nice. Um, for uh, over a year now. Yeah. Um, uh, that's very important to have that community. And then if, if somebody, are, there, are you planning on showing this off in any shows if people want to see it live or anything like that? Um, we're going to be anywhere? Um, we'll see for next year. Okay. Um, we, we've been showing at several different uh, shows um, yeah. throughout this year. Um, we were at uh, SIGGRAPH uh, last month. Okay. And we might be at IndieGate um, nice. sometime soon, but well, fingers we'll, crossed. We'll definitely we'll try to have you guys come out to the winter land in, yeah. in November to, to show it off again, because this was definitely a good time. Should be. Uh, yeah, it was definitely a lot of fun. Cool. Well, I'm happy you came here, and hopefully everybody uh, enjoys this. 
and we'll keep doing more of these uh, interviews as we go. So thanks for coming down. Cool. Thank you. Yep.